Hello everyone, welcome to another review. Today it's going to be a two-part review because, you know, films have been delayed in the UK thanks to the Queen's death and other things. I, I don't really know what. So today we've got two movies to review today, Pearl and Barbarian. Two other horror movies I'm going to be reviewing after Halloween. Just before I get into these reviews though, I just want to say I have got a few more reviews planned. I'm reviewing the first Black Panther, then its sequel, Wakanda Forever. And then I'm going to be ranking all the Phase 4 Marvel projects from worst to best. And then probably I'll be reviewing a film called Bones and All. So make sure to look out for all those videos. But without further ado, let's get straight into my review of Pearl. We're going to start off with Pearl. So this film is directed once again by Ty West. He directed the sequel to this. Pearl is a prequel to the movie X. Just before I get to Pearl, my views on X are very positive. I do like X. I think it's a nice homage to those 70s classic slashes like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So it is a very good film. Not one to be watching with the parents, but I would highly suggest X if you're a fan of like slasher movies. But Pearl is a prequel to X and it's set in 1918, the last year of World War I and the height of the Spanish flu. And we follow a younger version of Pearl. She lives on a farm. Her husband has gone to war. Her mother is so overprotective and her father is very disabled and ill. As she wants to become this famous star on the stage, in the cinemas. But her mom is too overprotective and will not let her. So because she's jealous, she goes on a murderous rampage, killing everyone that doesn't believe in her or attempts to hold her back. Now, the trailer for me didn't really make me excited because it just looked like a normal slasher movie but with A24 films you know to expect the unexpected and boy did this film bring out the unexpected. This movie does a great job at making you pick sides and it also does a great job at making a murderous psychopath believable and likeable. She has a great motivation you understand why she wants this she just wants to move away from this crappy life on the farm she wants to make it big but her mother's holding her back, but you understand the mother and why she's holding her back. She's too scared. Remember, this is World War I. This is Spanish flu, like the pandemic that we had a couple years ago. It is a very heightened time and worrying time in this world. But this film does take the normal slasher genre and mixes it up a bit and makes it very complex. And this film isn't really a horror film. It's more of a drama and I really did like that. I couldn't really count many jump scares. I think I could only count about one jump scare in the film. And it was very effective. But the film mostly uses silence and lingering camera shots to make you feel this element of discomfort. But for me, this film would not have worked without an Oscar-worthy performance from Mia Goth. She played Maxine in X and she's returning for the sequel Maxine in 2023. And she kills this role. She is Oscar worthy. She also played an older version of Pearl in X. And she was great there as well. So I'm really excited to see what she does in Maxine. She has had two amazing performances. Well, three actually. And she just stands out in this film. And works well with the other actors. That final shot where Pearl is just pulling off this, this awful smile. That... I, that, that was such a creepy way to end the film and the credits just rolling in. It, it was an amazing way to end that film. And there is a seven minute long take, no cut, no nothing. It's all just a giant monologue. Amir Goff knocks it out of the park. No cuts, no nothing. I mean, I think it is pretty clear that the script is on the table because she keeps looking down, but it does match the character because she is crying and everything. So while that is a little tiny nitpick, it's not really anything bad. So credit to Mia Gosh, she was fantastic in this film. The film also holds a lot of Easter eggs to X as well. Like the car dumped in the lake, we understand the origin of that now. That was a pretty cool way to solve it. And the kills in this are very creative and Awfully gory. This film was more gory than I thought, actually. Spoiler alert here. So, three, two, one. Spoilers away now. Her mother dies by being set on fire. And the makeup artist, first of all, did an amazing job. 
and it she just looked awfully burnt. She's wheezing and everything. It was a horrible sight to behold. But the kills in this were very creative, very gory, and it just makes Pearl this even more sinister. It's amazing how they make this person so likable. The film's cinematography is also amazing. There's so many nice shots there, and as I said, they just linger on the horror and the action. It was a very cool way to shoot it, and again, it just makes the film more effectively scary and uncomfortable. I think really the only problem I have with this film, and th this isn't really going to affect the scoring, but I don't know how this is going to relate to Maxine, the sequel, but we'll have to see. But this film is a great character study about Pearl, the villain from X, and it just makes her an even better villain, a better motivation, an amazing backstory. It couldn't get any better than this for me. For me personally, Pearl is one of the best movies of the year. Not the best movie, but I am shocked how different and complex this movie was. I just thought it was going to be a normal slasher, but it was more than that. Oscar-worthy performances, amazing complex characters, some fantastic direction and cinematography. It's not really a horror, but when the horror elements do come in, they are done very well. It makes you uncomfortable and unsettled. Overall, this movie is just pretty much perfect. Apart from its nitpicks, I just love this movie so much. And that is why, for the first time on Gibson H Reviews, Pearl is going to get the coveted 10 out of 10 rating. This is the second best movie of the year. I still think everything, everywhere, all at once is the best. But Pearl just knocked it out of the park for me. Now on to our next film of Barbarian. This film's directed by Zach Kreger, and it stars Bill Skarsgård. And this is a very interesting concept. A woman who's going for a job interview stays in an Airbnb, but she finds out someone has already taken the Airbnb. And all of a sudden, they work together to solve this mystery lurking underneath this weird house. Now, I was very excited for this film. I saw the trailer, and I was just hooked. I really wanted to see this film. And after it being delayed in the UK, I was so pissed. I was I really wanted to see this film. And you Americans got to see it very early. So count yourselves lucky, you lot. But finally, I saw it opening day. I wasted no time. First show in opening day, I was there. I was getting ready for this. And coming out of Barbarian, while this film was not bad, I actually think it's a good film, I, I wanted a lot more from it. But let's get into the positives. First off, the characters. Keith and Tess played amazingly first of all by Bill Skarsgård and Georgina Campbell. They did amazing jobs. But I really did like the characters. They're very likeable. They don't really have much arcs. In fact, one of those two characters does die about halfway through the film. No spoilers, don't worry. But I, I did like them. But as I said, there's not really much character arc much there. The film also does send a good message about Believe Women. It's a good theme and it's portrayed very well in this film, especially in the final scene with the cops not believing Tess about what's happening in this house. And it's not forced down your throat all the time. It was handled very well and doesn't feel forceful. But of course, this is a horror movie, so I'm expecting some scares. And apart from a couple very cheesy moments, the jump scares were actually done very well. Especially one scene in this dark corridor where the lights flicker on and off, on and off. And usually this could be a more cliche, just scary lighting. But it is very well done because of the character's actions. So I really did like that scare. And most of the jump scares were done very well in this film. And actually did get a good little scare out of me. Funny story, one of the jump scares near the end of the film... It scared this guy in front of me so much that his phone dropped down the side of the seats and I had to help him after the film. So that was an unfortunate moment. <laughs> I do think the backstory of the mystery is handled very well. It's an interesting concept and also very disgusting. Bearing in mind the gore in this as well. Ooh. Justin Long is in this film. Again, he's great. And I've I got to say, spoiler alert again, three to one spoilers away Justin Long's character does die in probably the most gruesome fashion this monster which I'll get into in a sec 
pushes in his eyelids and rips his head in half. I'd, I'd, I'm not really a squeamish guy. I can look at blood and gore all the time, but that made me look away because it was that frigging gory. But on to the mystery, and again, still spoilers. It was quite underwhelming. The reveal is there's this huge naked woman monster, and the backstory shows that this guy used to capture women and rape them, impregnate them, and that is a very sinister character action. And while that backstory is great, the mystery itself is not amazing. It's revealed that the guy is trapped under there very old and he kills himself near the end of the film, uh, probably because he feels guilty of what he's done. We're shown video clips of what happened and it's just disgusting. But I, I do think that, you know, you built up this entire mystery so well in the first two acts and there's no real big reveal about it. And they try to explain it near the end of the film. But we kind of already know what happened. So there is no reason to explain it. So the third act for me really did harm this film a lot. I did see before the film that people were very annoyed by the ending. And after watching it, I can see why. Because the ending just wasn't that great. It's satisfying, don't get me wrong. You know, people get to live, and move on. Very satisfying, you know, you're, you're happy for those characters. But the way it's done is is not great, unfortunately. This film, as I said earlier, does have some more cheesy moments. There's a scene where this monster girl is jumping off this gas tank thing and it looks like she's trying to dive into a pool from a diving board it looked super goofy and just took me away from the film a bit and there's no really exact reason why this monster is acting this way so again we're having a villain which did have a good backstory the main man but the girl itself i i don't really know much about her apart from the fact that she's watching breastfeeding videos and that she was raped by this guy. That That is all I know about her. What, why she started caring for these people. It made no sense to me, unfortunately. And I know this was a very heavy spoiler review, but I couldn't really review this film properly without getting into spoilers. If we're going to get into some more positives, though, the direction as well was pretty good. I like that shot where... We look at Tess through this long, dark stairway. That was a very cool shot and really did bring up the tension. And just that smile. This film has the guts to play a nice, happy song for the credits. Yes, we've just seen a little blood and gore, heads being ripped open. Why not play some nice, jolly music just to lighten the mood? <laughs> I, I really hate it when movies do that. Overall, Barbarian's first and second acts are very well done. But when it gets into that third act, it just crumbles on itself, unfortunately. The mystery could be very good. It's just not developed well. The build-up was great, but the payoff just wasn't that satisfying, unfortunately. There is some very cheesy moments that do take away from the tension that this film is building. But it does have some likeable characters, some really strong performances from the main three actors. Some very good direction and a few good jump scares in there as well. And some very nice tension building. So overall, Barbarian is not as good as I wanted it to be. I do think the third act did ruin this film. But I do not think it's a bad movie by any means. I'm going to give Barbarian a 7 out of 10. Not a bad movie, but really wanted more from it. But guys, that is it for this two-part review. I hope you all enjoyed. And make sure to tell me what you think of these two films. I'm really interested to see what you think. Next time we're reviewing Black Panther, the first one, and then Wakanda Forever. Really excited for those two. But I hope you all enjoyed this video. Make sure to have a good day and see you later.